Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling in Zim... I am Dr. Abstract, and we're going to be taking a look at what's new in Zim NFT 01. We've already done a bubbling video on the sort of the introducing all of the new stuff. It can be found at the news section right here. So I'm at zimjazz.com, going into the news section, and there's a little mini site right here, Zim NFT. Zero one has launched. So we took a look at dialogues in the last bubbling. If you're interested in that, pop on there. And then what we want to look at in this bubbling is go to the little arrow here and press the arrow. We're looking at emojis. Aha, how much fun is that? So super. Here's a lollipop emoji. And you can press on these and have a dog licking the lollipop. <laughs> nice, huh? <laughs> and the dog happens to be wearing a dress. <laughs> Put that underneath. Well, you can't tell it's a dress anymore, can you? Whatever. All right. So um, we were kind of surprised at how uh, advanced the emojis had become in what's it called? Unicode or whatever. So this is a, a sample set of Unicode emojis. It's not all of them, though. Um, but what we've done, let's throw those away. Bye bye. What we've done is made an emoji picker right there. We have also made it uh, collapsible so that uh, all, all of the panels now in windows and panes have the option to be collapsible and we could close it. When we close it, we're using a little emoji down here to say, hey, do you want to see that again? <laughs> Cute, huh? So that's just grayed out for now. Um, but if we close it, it sort of pops up and says, yeah, let's look at that. Anyway, you can pull up an emoji picker, much like you would pull up a, a color picker and let people start playing with emojis. Uh, you can populate the emoji picker with the emojis that you choose from either these emojis or from more emojis. Sound good? So let's look at the tool. There's also a tool. This is uh, this is for the end user to, to play with emojis. But this tool right here is for you as you're developing, you can find out the code to put that in your code. You can also just paste the rainbow in there. But if you do that and uh, minify your code, I can't remember what happens when you minify your code, or if you're sharing your code with ZimZap or in uh, for kids in, in Slate and kids, then uh, they may not get saved to the database properly unless you change them to this uh, U UTF code, okay? So that's the idea. You would then copy that, and that's saying it's copied for you. You'd go to your code and paste it in there. So now there's more emojis. The more emojis, you can go to this place called, and, and thanks, Chris, uh, uh, Carol and Chris, Carl and Chris have been um, working with emojis, and there was a code pen version uh, that's talked about in the, in the actual what's it called, the code <laughs> for this. Uh, but anyway, you can go check that out where he's done some, he's done this emoji conversion. So we've sort of taken it and made a visual emoji tool. And, and yet you can still go out to another, oh, get what happened. Oh, I got to go there. So I'm going to go and you can search for any of these emojis. So here's emojis under activities, such as a man biking. Click the man biking, copy it here, like uh, copy. So I'm just copying it there and then go to the emoji tool and paste it right in here. Paste. So there's the little man and hit get. That's great. So uh, there it is. We've gotten that um, and we copy it. And we would go put that in our code and we'd have a man biking. I don't know if we got a man biking here. Is there already a man biking here? I don't, don't know. They're not terribly well organized. This uh, as as sort of indicated in the code as well, is a set of emojis that all had their codes <coughs> already. And I've just taken that set. If we view it here, view page source. There's the set right there. Did a little bit of fiddling. It's tricky working with these emojis at the same time as working with labels. Because if you want to go show the code, it ends up showing the emoji. And you're going, no, 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 I want to show the code. So I have a, a sort of a system where we have both the code and this fake code right here. My apologies. 
and this fake code with little dashes. Anyway, you don't need to worry about that, that, but somebody had already made this pairing of names, had to go through the names as well. I think perhaps English wasn't their first, <laughs> first language. Everything was plural, first of all, cars, but there's only one car there, taxis, but there's only one taxi. <laughs> Anyway, so I had to go through and adjust for that, and plus there were some dubious labelings, although some fun labelings at times. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, there's a lot of those emojis you don't realize. It's just like scrolling on and on and on. You don't realize how many there are there. It, it doesn't look that bad. Oh, there's a lot of emo emojis in there too. It doesn't look that bad when it's laid out. By the way, we're using the Zim wrapper here, where we just took all those and threw it into a wrapper. So there they all are. Here's the frame. Uh, that's an initial label. There's the wrapper. And we took all that stuff and stuck it right in the wrapper. So there we go. The other things are the pop-up panes. It's hardly anything. This is, um, I can't remember. This is what we're doing when we press on wrappers and doing the conversion. And uh, the conversion is actually right here. So that's the code pen. URL to the conversion. Anyway, there you go. To, to present them was just that. To, to pop up the windows and do the, you know, do that other stuff was a little bit more. But you know that Zim's not, I mean, even, even this kind of thing took just a second to make because all we're doing is, uh, you know, little bits and pieces here with Zim specifying some things. So, Zim is very easy to code. Sometimes when we stack it like this, it looks like possibly more code than um, you know you might expect, but it's not really. And Zim is constantly coming in at half the size of other frameworks and libraries, constantly. Almost every time we compare something, we're sitting between 40 and 60% of the original code. A lot of that is with chaining, but a lot of that is with the, the features that we've given you that you don't have to do all that much. Okay, anyway, um, that's a little bit about emojis. So you can take this emoji and paste it into your code and start uh, working it, uh, working with emojis with that NFT or with that tool. And then, like I said, this one is for the end user. So how do we make one of these things? Let's go have a look at the code to do that. So here's the emoji code. All this is in the NFT directory in bubbling, and we're doing bubblings on these examples. So this is the emoji picker. We're bringing in Zim, NFT01 there, and emoji and emoji picker. So these were the eyeballs. That's the code for the eyeballs. We put that in there. The code for the garbage can, I just pasted a garbage can right in there because I'm not minifying this. I can't remember what happens when you minify it. I don't think it works. I'm not sure. Maybe it does. Um, but I know that if you go and use Zim Zap, for instance, uh, we'll lose this. But I'm not having to zap this, so I think it's okay. So anyway, the two different types. This is UTF right here. And this is, uh, what's the other one? Um, Unicode. Okay, where actually pasted in there. So what have we done? That's in the, then we have an emoji picker here. So const emoji picker is a new emoji picker. There it is. We've set the cache to true on it. <clears throat> and we're centering it. Why do we set the cache to true? It may have just been testing and we, we don't need to do that. Let's have a look. I'll open up in browser plus here. Oh, Okay, I'll open up in a browser. Yeah, look at those crisp emojis there. Um, I think it was, it might have been the scrolling of it uh, was a little bit slower in some cases. But looks pretty decent now, the speed now. It was scrolling maybe on mobile would like to be cached. I'm not sure, but we could then, we could then use, uh, could have been, I was just testing it there. We could then, cache it if it's mobile. So that would look something like this, cache mobile, like so. And mobile is either going to be true or false. If it's mobile, it'll be considered true and it will cache. Otherwise, it'll false. So that would be how you could make that decision. And then we've got the emoji picker when the emoji picker changes. So we have a change event. And any change event that Zim has, any of the components that 
that use a change event, you're welcome to chain on, chain that is, <laughs> chain, oops, <laughs> double, double deleted, chain, you're, oh, that's not how you spell chain, is it? Chain, how do you spell chain again? <laughs> chain. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. There, that's how you spell chain, right? <laughs> You're welcome to chain on. <laughs> bizarre. You're welcome to chain on a change event. And then when the emoji picker changes, when somebody has selected an emoji, then we are making a new emoji. So here's the emoji class now in Zim. We're making a new emoji. Oh, we could just actually use the emoji that we picked. We could clone it. But uh, cloning it will keep the size of the emoji. All right, it's text. It will keep that size. If we're caching it, let's see. And we, yeah, if we're keeping it cached and we increase the size, then um, it's going to look raggedy around the edge. So what we're doing instead is we're making a new emoji that is bigger. So we're using the emo the current emoji that is selected. That's what it's called. So use current emoji to find out which emoji is selected. But we're asking for the code of that and we're passing that to the emoji right here. So a new emoji, whatever the current emojis is, whatever its code is, pass it to the emoji. I'm not sure if we made it so that it will, let's try that if it just, we don't even need to pass in the code. We refresh here and I get a donut. I don't see a donut. I don't see a ghost. <laughs> so it looks like we need to pass in the code to the um, emoji. And let's have a look here. We refresh here. I see a donut. I see a horsey. Get that donut. Get that donut. <laughs> They're not bad. Um, the other issue is you can right now we've got it grabbable so that the the invisible space is grabbable and that that can be handy but sometimes it gets in the way you're going oh no i want to grab the donut there but i grabbed oh donuts on top now but i grabbed the unicorn it's like darn i think you can avoid that we may have expanded the emoji we could turn that off or perhaps just not expand it i can't remember anyway <clears throat> We are uh, centering the emoji on the content and dragging it. Great. And then when we press up on the emoji, we're testing to see if the emoji has hit the can. And we're caching the emoji and animating it. So we didn't bother caching the one we made. So note that this emoji is not cached. It was just that emoji picker of a, you know, whatever, 200 emoji text uh, vector diagrams on mobile was a little bit slow, but I think that that probably would be the best way to handle that. Um, but when we animate it out, yes, we are caching it because I did notice that on mobile, if we didn't cache it, watch the unicorn spin. See that spin? If on mobile, you didn't cache it, it's just like here, then here, then here. It's like three places and that's it. And that was the spin. Or something like that. You know, I was like, oh, it's not too smooth. So all we're doing is as we go to animate it, we cache it. And then it looks smooth on mobile. So the caching turns those vectors. These things are all vector. They're all vector. Okay. Um, so we can make them as big as they want. And they look nice and smooth. Um, but when we go to animate it, that's animating all those vectors on a spin. And mobile doesn't like the vectors as much as it likes the cache, because if you cache it, the GPU does it. All right, so there you go. Little bit of info about that stuff. Mm, there's closing and opening the emoji picker, and we have a button. What's the button doing? Oh, it's going off to the tool. And that's some header stuff that we do each time, okay, for the arrows. All righty. That was the emoji. Yay, emoji, emoji tool. Now, this has been a bubbling. Uh, so what's bubbling with Zim? We're going to see the emojis again when we look in future bubblings on the new 
uh, indicator. It's got some stuff going on there. And we did another one where we were emitting, with an emitter, we were emitting emojis. Wow, emitting emojis, emoji emitter. I'm Dr. Abstract, come and join us. Come and join us. Uh, zimjazz.com slash discord, zimjazz.com slash slack. Uh, we would love to help you out with Zim, see what you're making. It's uh, pretty amazing. And this has been a bubbling about Zim NFT 01, the next version. We already had Zim NFT 00, where we talk a lot about making NFTs with Zim. But there were a lot of updates with Zim NFT as well. Oh, uh, well, tune in next time to the other bubblings. And in those other bubblings, we'll show you where you can find all the updates as well. Cheers. Talk to you later.